What's going on YouTube? I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the side, you've come to the right place. So, I'm way behind on the news. I spent like five days on the Pokemane video, and now I gotta catch up again. Fooey, man. You've probably heard the news by now. It's old hat at this point, but Microsoft is buying Activision for $69 billion. I'm sure this has nothing to do with the fact that Activision has fallen on hard times lately. What with the various allegations levied against them, the steep decline of the quality of their biggest titles like, you know, Call of Duty, and their plummeting stock price, but regardless. Well, people are speculating on whether or not Microsoft will claim exclusivity on some of the franchises that Activision and Blizzard owns. They do own a lot of pretty big Big franchises, it's looking to be that, at least for some, they'll be staying multi-platform, namely like Call of Duty. That's a no-brainer, Call of Duty is one of the biggest names in gaming. So for that to be an Xbox slash Microsoft exclusive, well, there would be riots. They have this to say about the matter. I'll just say to players out there who are playing Activision Blizzard games on Sony's platform, it's not our intent to pull communities away from that platform and we remain committed to that. So, you know, that's a vague statement, who knows if they'll keep their word, but yeah, there you have it. I've been hearing people complaining about a monopoly, obviously. Microsoft has already acquired some pretty big names in the industry, namely Bethesda, Rare, Mojang, and so much more. Maybe they have a point there, but you know, I've kind of noticed something on the topic of monopolies, right? People say that more competition is good, right? If there's more competition, companies will be more inclined to keep their platforms in tip-top shape to compete with everyone else. As a believer in the free market, I agree with that. But then they complain that there's too much competition, like with streaming services, right? People are mad because there's too much streaming platforms. Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Plus. same with video games. You got Steam, Epic, Uplay, Origin, Battle.net, and people get mad because there's so many different platforms they gotta subscribe to or download, right? Even though they say more competition is better, right? Then one of these companies buys some other companies and then they complain that they're monopolizing the market. I don't feel too strongly about it, but I just find that funny. So, as far as this whole thing goes, there's really not a lot to say about it. I think it's just kind of a matter of waiting to see how all this will play out. There was a pretty interesting tweet made on the matter, though, made by Greg Eisenberg. Looks like he's got a blue check mark, so you just know whatever he's got to say is is not going to be too smart. Activision Blizzard sold for seven billion today, and the community is going to see zero dollars from this. Play to earn couldn't come sooner. So play to earn, for those of you who don't know, it's basically like the thing with crypto and NFTs. At its core, these play to earn games are gamified financial tools that let you earn crypto. A lot of these have like in-game economies where in-game item prices change based on supply and demand, that kind of stuff. I will admit it's an interesting concept. Not really up my alley though, because I play video games to have fun, not as a second job. It's simple. People who participate in a game should be rewarded for their participation. Okay, but I mean, in a way, like, you are. You already are, right? You play a game and the idea is you get rewarded by having a fun experience. It really is that simple. That's not how this works. You aren't entitled to a cut of a company's profits simply because you buy their products. That's absurd. The way it does work is you start up a company, risk your own money, bust ass to make a product that people want, and if you really want to, if your company's value gets high enough, you can sell it, right? Are people really this entitled that they think they deserve a cut of a company's profit simply because they consume their product? Jesus, what a time we're living in. But yeah, again, not really too much to say about that. Moving on, at this point, I think we know what a disappointment Battlefield 2042 is. I don't think it's a bad game, although apparently it released in a pretty bad state, bugs, glitches, all that stuff. At this point in time though, I think it's a middling experience. The graphics aren't special, the gameplay is pretty boring, it's a hero shooter, even though there's no reason for it to be a hero shooter. The maps are frankly awful, that's something I don't get. Like, I have no idea how they messed up the map design. I mean, how can a company worth billions of dollars not know how to make good maps? So again, Battlefield 2042 is a pretty mixed experience for me. If it was like a $30 indie game, I could see myself being satisfied with it. But a $60 AAA game, it's got a season pass too, I think that makes it like $100. Jesus, man. And here's the thing, I probably have the most positive opinion on the game. Everyone else has just been bashing the hell out of it, which I can't say it's not deserved, right? Anyways, this is apparently a rumor from an insider and we know how untrustworthy these sorts of people can be. We see it all the time. Insiders and journalists who claim to have exclusive knowledge only for it to later be revealed that they're totally full of crap. Games journalists have about as much integrity as, well, actual journalists. So basically what I'm saying here is take all this with a grain of salt. EA is reportedly very disappointed with how Battlefield 2042 has performed and is looking at all the options when it comes to the title. This is including looking at free to play in some capacity. 
I'll have more on this tomorrow. Spoiler alert, he never actually follows up on this. I don't know, on the off chance this is true, there's some interesting discourse to be had here. For one, he appears to quote EA, says they're looking at all the options. Looking at all the options, they say. Here's an option for you, try making an actually good polished game. Wow, you mean people are willing to buy a product as long as the quality is satisfactory? No really, who knew? And frankly, the fact that this is being rumored just three months after the game releases, well, that's pretty aggravating. I mean, people already dropped a lot of money on the game, and not only is it subpar, but out of the blue, they're going free to play because they want to save their game that's already dying. Personally, I feel pretty damn betrayed. Now, I bought the game, not at full price, because you'd have to be a moron to get a AAA game at full price in this day and age. But honestly, I'm not even that mad all this is going on. I mean, I kind of deserve it for buying a AAA game in this day and age. Let's face it, they just don't care anymore. That's why I stick to indie games, or at the very least, AAA studios that's shown they give half a damn. To be honest though, I'm hoping this could be a turning point for EA, and maybe other studios as well. For too long, it seems they've half-assed their games while maximizing profits through microtransactions and the like. They did it because they thought they could get away with it, and you know, for a time they did. But if EA is getting desperate enough to maintain their player base, who knows? Maybe they might more thoroughly polish their games next time around, make it worth the money. As for me, I'll probably be sticking to Battlefield 1 one because, well, I like having fun with my games. That's all I've got for this shtick. Nah, double jack your favor and keep it groovy. Thank you. Thank you very much.